morning, everybody. Glad to see you here today. Um, let's start the day with our learning video. So we'll know what we're going to be talking about today. It's Easter week, so I'm going to have to flip between my computer screen and myself because I've lost the cord to my TV. It has gone down. It's not working anymore. So we're just going to have to make this work for my from my computer screen. So let's look today. We've got. There's some peeps on there since it's Easter week. All right, today we're gonna to be talking about what a protagonist and an antagonist is. Okay, so if you look on here, the definition for protagonist is the leading character or one of the major characters that is the champion for a particular cause or idea. So a lot of times this is called the good guy. Not always, but most of the time this is the good guy in the story if you're reading a <clears throat> a narrative type story. Then we have the antagonist. That's the adversary who actively opposes or is hostile to someone or something. So this is the one that is going to go against whatever the protagonist is trying to accomplish in their um, idea for their cause or the specific idea of the story. So those are what we're going to be talking about this week. That's our skill for this week. So protagonist an antagonist. Now let's do a little um, example of that so we can understand what a protagonist and an antagonist is. <clears throat> okay, so in our book, Frindle, when we read that at the beginning of the year, we had the protagonist, <clears throat> which right here, that's Nick, Nicholas Allen. And then the antagonist in the story was Mrs. Granger. Now at the end of the story, we find out that the Mrs. Granger was being an antagonist because she wanted Nick to actually complete his task or his cause. So in the story, she came off as the antagonist, but the, at the end, she was actually trying to help Nick all along. So when you think about the protagonist, it is usually someone who is trying to do something. So Nick was trying to get everyone to use the word friendle instead of the word pen. And so that was his cause in the story. And Mrs. Granger played the villain and wanted everyone to be in trouble for doing that because she was actually trying to help the word get used more than it already was so it could be put in the dictionary, which was her favorite thing. So that's a little example today of protagonist and antagonist, okay? Now, our word of the day is solution. And there's a picture of what I visualize for solution, for how it's going to be used, because solution is a multiple meaning word. So we're going to be reading today <coughs> um, out of Origami Yoda, and you will be looking to see if you can figure out what the word solution means. Okay, now let me put this in my little holder, maybe. Okay, oops. Sorry, that was bumpy. <laughs> okay, so we're reading out of Darth Paper. Here we go. And when we finished the other day, they had gone on an adventure with their science teacher trying to collect insects and bugs for their um, assignment. And Harvey, unfortunately, was put with Dwight because that was the only seat left. And they fought the whole time. And Harvey told him he wasn't going to find a humming hummingbird hawk moth. And... He did find a hummingbird hawk moth. And so Harvey is not very happy. And, um, but Dwight was, and they got an A. So this chapter is called Origami Yoda and the Non-Video Game. So this is gonna be about them learning how to do something that is not a video game, which um, some of you probably have been playing a lot of video games. So this is another way to, um, have something to do that's not a video game. So this was written by Mike, and if you don't remember who Mike is from the first book, Origami Yoda, um, Mike is the crybaby, the one who cried because he always struck out at softball. So an Origami Yoda helped him with that. So this is by Mike. Dear school board, every morning me and my friends, Lance, Hannah, and Murky, spend the time before school on the computers in the library playing this awesome online game, Clone Wars Strike Team. We all play at the same time and have to cooperate to win. Other kids like Harvey, ooh, sorry, other kids like Harvey, Remy, and Ben 
play stuff too, or check emails or whatever. It's a fun way to start the school day, or at least it was. Oh, and we also learned valuable lessons about teamwork, planning, math, hand-eye coordination, and other important skills that aided in our education and probably improved our performance on the standards of learning tests. Then one day, about a month ago, we got into the library and there were signs all over the library saying, no email, no chat, no Facebook, no video games. We sat down to play anyway, but couldn't get on the website. That's when Mrs. Calhoun came over and told us that the new library policy was no games. She said the Clone Wars site had been blocked and so had some others. She also said that if we found a game site that wasn't blocked, we couldn't play that either. And if she caught us, she'd throw us out of the library. I started to argue with her, which was a bad idea because sometimes I get worked up when I get in an argument. Mrs. Calhoun sent me to the office to see Principal Rabsky. Rabsky said she was disappointed to see me crying over video games and that maybe in some school suspension would help me to calm down. I tried to explain the difference between mad tears and boohoo tears. Nobody ever listens. And there's the little tears that says, we're back. <laughs> Rabsky told me this wasn't the librarian's decision anyway. It was a school board members who had made up the policy. So first of all, we would like you to change the no policy game. The, game we pl the games we play are very strategic and educational, kind of like chess, just with lightsabers and stuff. Second, I'll tell you what happened next. While I was in ISS, yes, I did have to go. I realized that I should have gotten Origami Yoda's advice before I did anything. I got out of ISS in time for lunch and me and Murky went over to see Dwight. Origami Yoda, how can we get Mrs. Out Calhoun to let us play games again? Let you play games? She will? No, she won't. She put up a sign. Saw that sign I did? No video games, it said. Uh, yeah, that's what I just said. Other kind of games there are. What do you mean, like playing chess or something? That's boring. Chess is not boring, said Dwight. Well, compared to with Clone Wars Strike Team it is. And don't forget that already banned card games, they banned no magic, no Pokemon, nothing. There is another, Yoda said mystically. Type of game, Mr. Snyder, you must ask. Mr. Snyder was my English teacher last year. He was a nice guy, so I figured it couldn't hurt to ask him. We went by his room after school. He told us that when he was a kid back in the 1970s, you couldn't play video games at school because they didn't have any computers. And they hadn't invented Pokemon back then either. But they did have Star Wars, he told us, and his friends played this Star Wars game. Man, I haven't thought about that game in a really long time, in years, Mr. Snyder said. He got out some paper and drew the Death Star in the center. Then he drew three X-Wings in one corner and three TIE Fighters in the other corner. He added some asteroids. And there's the Death Star, TIE Fighters, X-Wings. Uh, is this a game, Mr. Snyder? Murky asked. Yeah, hold on, said Mr. Snyder, and he pulled a pencil out of his drawer. You want to be the Rebels, or do you want to be the Empire? Uh, Rebels, said Murky. Okay, I'll take the TIE Fighters then, said Mr. Snyder, and he put the pencil tip on top of a TIE Fighter. Then he rested his finger on the eraser so the pencil stood straight up. Okay, like this, on the paper. Then he squinted at the paper, he moved his other hand into position, and he flicked his index finger real quick against the pencil down near the bottom. So he flicked his finger, but it was down here. The pencil went flying and it left a mark on the paper about an inch long. Hmm, I've lost my touch, he said. But you see how it works? If you hit another ship, your shot is good and you've blown that ship up. If not, you move your ship to the end of the mark. First person to blow up all the other guy's ships wins. There were some more rules. Hit the Death Star and your ship blows up. Hit an asteroid and your ship loses a turn. Here's some pictures up here. He picked up the pencil and gave it to Murky. 
Your turn, he said. I watched as they had a space fight all around the Death Star. I couldn't wait for them to finish so Hannah and I could start our own game. It was pretty awesome. See, you can't just go firing away like you do in a video game because if you miss the other guy by an inch, then your ship gets moved. So that's an inch away from the other guy. And he blasts you the next time. It really does take strategy to play. So that was the beginning of the Pencil Wars. A bunch of other people have started playing too, and we've added all kinds of extra rules and special ships and players and other stuff you can use. Mr. S told us about another pencil game that they called the Obstacle Course, and Murky realized it was perfect for pod racing. Man, it is so cool to have a game with four people all trying to trick their pod racers, oh flick, sorry not trick, <laughs> trying to flick their pod racers through Beggar's Canyon without hitting the walls of each other. I mean, I still want you school board people to let us play on the computers again, but until then, this solution is totally awesome. Harvey's comment. Yeah, and it's awesome to try to study in the library by a, while a bunch of idiots are flicking pencils and shouting, ooh, ooh, I got you. The pencil games stink. Bring back the computer games. My comment. Harvey's just mad because the one time he played, Hannah blew up his TIE fighter before he could even get one of her X-Wing fighters. I don't want to go back into the whole is origami Yoda thing real, but it sure is weird that Mr. Snyder told them he hadn't thought about playing that game in years. So how could Yoda Dwight have known about it? All right. The word solution was in there. And your assignment today. Now let me show you, um, I want to show you the back side of this. And then there's a little bit more here. So I'm going to let you look at this picture. I don't know if you can see it that light. There we go. That's how to play the game. So that's how to play the game. And I'll do a little uh, picture down off of the light in a minute so you can see it better. It says, anyway, I think the school board will like this one because it shows Dwight helping people finding something better to do other than play video games or complain about not playing video games. Our guidance counselor is always talking about positive solutions. Well, this is one. The next one is two. I wish I'd gotten in on it. Okay, so that was how to play the Pencil Wars game. And I'm going to take this off of here. Okay so you can see it better. Okay, I'm gonna leave it still just for a minute so you can see what it says. So if you wanna play the Pencil Wars at home with your family, you can. So here's the first step. Here's step two. Here's step three. Here's step four. Okay, so I think that would be a super fun game to play at home with your family if um, you're looking for something different to do. And uh, that chapter was really cool. Now, what I want you to do for your assignment today, we talked about protagonist and antagonist. I want you, in our story so far, in this Darth Paper Strikes Back, I want you to decide who you think the protagonist is and who you think the antagonist is in this story. And I want you to write that on a piece of paper and use complete sentences who you think the protagonist is and who you think the antagonist is in this story. And we will talk about that answer tomorrow. Now, for some other things we've been working on, um, Landon, I'm proud of you. You've already done your egg drop experiment. That was awesome. He put it on Facebook. If you have an egg at your home, I know everybody's having some hard time getting groceries. So if you have an egg and you want to do the egg drop, uh, we'd like to see those any day this week, but you can definitely do them on a Thursday or Friday. And, um, you can show them to other people if you want to put them on Facebook. If you don't want to put them anywhere and you just want me to see them, you can, um, PM me and, uh, we'll get to see those and proud of you Landon for doing that. Now, we also have our egg, so I'm gonna put my cup down here so you can see it better. Let me flip this. You can see, look at the top of that. It's definitely turning blue, and look at the stuff that's on the top. Now let me show you what it looks like from the side. 
there's some stuff in there already. So write down what you see. Pop him up a little bit. What your observations is, or what your observations are, excuse me, for the egg so far. So you wanna write those down on your little piece of paper from yesterday. Um, looks like this if you weren't here yesterday. And I wrote a little bit on mine, and it says we put a raw egg in a in a cup. We added, then we covered it with vinegar. We added some food coloring, blue to be precise. Now we are going to watch and see if it becomes a rubbery egg. That's what I wrote for yesterday. Today's the seventh. You'll write down what you saw today, and how the the egg looked for today. Now we are going to do our factor crud. Yesterday's factor crud question was, studies show that pizza is the most popular junk food among Americans of every age and gender. So you had to decide if you thought that that was factor crud. Um, thinking about do, how many people eat pizza and is it really junk food? And the answer to that would, might surprise you a little bit because I love some pizza, I'm not gonna lie. Colton loves pizza, we like pizza at our house. The answer is crud. It is not actually a fact because it says on here that some nutritionalists actually consider pizza to not be a junk food because of the toppings and things that you can make it out of. So it is not the most popular junk food that there is. <laughs> so there's the answer to that. Now, yesterday I hid my little yellow peep, like my big peep here, and hit it in my room back here. And Macy and Sabrina, y'all were the first ones to message me and tell me that you had found it. So if you guessed that it was under the red blanket, let's go over here, right here, that's where it was yesterday. So, Today, it's hidden in here somewhere else, and then tomorrow, we're gonna move to outside. So, I'm gonna scan the room again for you and see if you can find it. Got some stuff going on in here. Okay. 